Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of The Hangout. It's Sid, and if you love music as much as I do, well, this is the perfect podcast for you. Today we're hanging out with a talented singer-songwriter coming from Australia, and let me tell you, her voice is so captivating and so unique. She has recently released two songs, and she likes to bundle them in, like, duologies. We'll definitely get into that um, later in the show, but let's welcome Greta Ray to the show. How are you? Hi. I'm very well, thank you. I'm so excited because you guys, I guess over in Australia, you guys are back to normal with all the COVID protocols and everything. You guys are living life. How is that going back to the normal life? Very strange. I think we all are kind of like, especially because I'm from Melbourne and Melbourne was the, um, well, Victoria was the state that was in lockdown for the longest because we had a second wave, unlike other places in Australia. Um, So I think a lot of us are a little bit on edge, like as much as we're like super happy to be doing things, but with the way that it kind of works here, like if there's like a few cases, everything just kind of like shuts down for a couple of days. Mm. They try and contain it and they trace it. Um, so I think everyone's a bit like, oh, like you never know, like that, because it's you know. Um, but for the most part, I mean, I was at a I was at a gig last night, which is crazy. I was at a standing gig, and um, my friend was playing, and um, yeah, it was incredible. Like she was amazing, and she got her mum to crowd surf. And I think when that was happening, like I was really like, yeah, wow, okay, COVID's not really a thing right now. <laughs> what is going on? That's crazy. Um, but yeah, we're very grateful. Um, it's nice to see people playing music again because if, like I think watching people perform and the looks on their faces, like they're so happy to be doing it again. So it's just nice to be witnessing that for sure. That's amazing. Do you have any upcoming shows that you have in the works? Um, I have like a little gig um, at some point in May. Um, but I don't have any like kind of proper shows planned as of yet because we're like at the very beginning of the campaign. Um, I I think we're just kind of like planning how we're going to do those shows basically. So hopefully sometime mid year we'll have something in the works. That's so exciting. Congratulations on your first duology, um, duology one. For those who don't really know what the duology concept is, can you kind of explain it? Yeah. Um, the duology concept came about, um, I think, I mean, I was looking for a way to, I release a lot of the new music that I've been writing in a way that was like interesting, I suppose, and gave me an opportunity to tell the stories in depth behind the songs and spotlight them a little bit more rather than doing like the traditional, like here's one or two singles and then like the body of work or a small body of work or something. So, um, yeah, with the duologies that was inspired by the fact that I had written um, on my last EP, which was called Here and Now, there were two songs that like went into each other on the record that were about the same situation, um, but from two different perspectives. Like one was a very like devastating heartbreak song and one was a more like optimistic, melancholy like reflective piece I suppose um and so yeah I love the fact that that was like a little pair of like a little thematic pair and um yeah I used to refer to them as sister songs when I would play them live and then I just kind of thought about that and then thought about changing the term because I I guess I looked at a lot of the new music that I'd been writing and realized that I'd been doing a similar thing and I think that that like I'd been writing just you know unintentionally in pairs I suppose um and yeah I wanted to call them duologies and I think that the reason that I was kind of writing in that way is just because like I'm in my early 20s and I think you change your mind about how you feel and a lot of things and yeah I think um I don't know you write one song and then like maybe a week or a couple of months later you're like I feel differently about that situation that I wrote about in that session I'm gonna write about it again but like in a slightly different way so I think that the duologies capture like me just like learning lessons about life and stuff so um yeah it's really nice to be able to release my music in that way. I think in a previous interview, you mentioned it was two truths can exist in the same space and that's okay to ch- kind of change your mind. I really love that idea. And like, it also shows, cause I guess people sometimes think you on- you can only feel one thing when you're going through something, but this kind of has like different perspectives or you're feeling multiple things. Um, when you were writing this, did one song or concept come before the next or was it kind of like a simultaneous um, reaction? Um, I mean, Yeah, I think maybe more so with some than others. Like um, there's one particular duology that, you know, I'm very excited for people to hear and the songs were written like a week apart. And it was just because so much happened in my personal life within that week. And I was leaning on music to, you know, figure out how I was feeling. And 
um, yeah, I went into one session and felt a particular way and wrote the song about it. And then, you know, things happened and I got into another session and I was like, oh, I'm writing about the same thing, but it just has totally different underlying feelings about it. So, yeah, but I think like with the first duology, with duology one, um, that was probably one wherein I was, I don't know, really looking for how I was going to, because I loved um, Bigger Than Me, it was like, you know, I was very new to co-writing and I was kind of just like at the beginning of writing a whole bunch of new music. And I think that I was so excited about that song and whatever pair that I was going to write with it. I think, yeah, I thought really long and hard about like how I would do that in a way that would capture, yeah, the other angle of what that feeling in Bigger Than Me was, the more kind of like um, withdrawn private relationship with creativity rather than the like big bold chant from the rooftops love for creativity that is in Bigger Than Me. So Yeah, Bigger Than Me is just such an infectious song and the first time I heard it, it just caught my attention. I feel like it's like a summer anthem of just like loving what you do and it's just so good. Um, when you were, you were sitting on that song for a while, from the beginning to now, what was the kind of transition from like the first cut to the final cut? Oh, it was interesting. Um, when I was kind of going through lots of old content on my laptop and phone, um, trying to find all of the things that I had gathered of, you know, documenting the process of making that song, I came across like the first ever demo, which I remember so specifically, like how I felt when I heard it. And I was so yeah. excited, but now considering how it sounds and it's grown so much and we were able to like beef up the production and it's really lush. Like I was listening to the first demo, which was something that I sang over two years ago. And I was like, how, <laughs> how was I so excited about this? <laughs> I mean, I get it. You don't know where it's going to go. You don't know what it's going to become at the time, but it's so interesting because I think, I mean, especially in this time in my life where like, you know, I'm singing a lot more and like a lot's changing about the way that I work and stuff like things move quite quickly but mm. I mean, as a vocalist, like I hear that demo back and I'm like, oh my gosh, where is my diction? My whole approach to singing is totally different. Like I'm, I think I have, you know, after recording a lot of new music over the past couple of years and singing lots and playing more shows before the pandemic, like I think my voice, I like to think my voice is a lot stronger. So I would say that that was probably something that changed about the recording. And I guess also it started, I mean, it's a writing day. So you make, you do what you can in a session with a demo. Um, we were very fixated on getting all of the harmonies in in the writing session, but in terms of the production, and there's so much going on, I, I, which I love. Like it feels like a big painting, um, which we kind yeah. of you know displayed in the music video for it. But just with all of the different instrumental layers and how much is going on, like it feels like this really like this wonderland of instruments. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's kind of like, yeah, it, it, I think it just developed a lot in terms of like what we could add to it and how anthemic and expansive it feels now in comparison to the day that we wrote it. That's amazing. I want to talk about the beautiful music video as well. It's just the song matches the video so well and just the colors at the end when you got to paint yourself. What was that experience kind of like? Because I guess you were also very strong heavily in the creative process as well. Yeah, yeah, I was. Um, oh, I mean, with that video, um, I think I rewrote the, the brief for that like maybe five times um, because I was living in Melbourne and we were constantly getting, you know, further locked down up until it was like, you now have all of the restrictions. You have the curfew at 8pm, you can leave for one hour a day, like, oh, for, you know, for a time, gosh. we did have a very, very strict lockdown in Melbourne because we were trying to battle and amazingly we did this second mm -hmm. wave. So while that was happening, I was adjusting the brief with the restrictions. So it would start with lots of people, like a big cast. And then I was like, now I'll rewrite it. And there's just, you know, one dancer and me. And then there's like one painter. And I tried to kind of keep compromising. And eventually it was just kind of like, I think that now we just have to let go and it's just not the time. And I'm just so glad that I waited until we could properly make the video. So I, I got to use one of the, the first briefs that I wrote for it. I sent it through to um, the director, Josh, and he kind of sent back his own interpretation of the brief. So it was like a really awesome collaboration in that sense. And I think what's so exciting about making a video like that and working with, you know, a dance choreographer and all of those kids that are dancers as well is like the song is so much about um, creative collaboration. 
and all of the way like the ways that we're moving in that video with like the mirroring of the movements like it's all very metaphorical to like learning from other creatives and them learning mm -hmm. from you um and all being a part of this one really magical thing so I think getting to do that while the song itself is about that concept um yeah. it's like a picture in a picture in a picture anyway it was very <laughs> it was very exciting um I loved making it um the kids were all little troopers because there was just like no airflow in that warehouse and like it was so so hot and they were dressed in like trading gear and they were sweating and I was like oh you poor things and they gave it their all and yeah and then we got to you know cover them in paint which was just so fun and I mean with my with the paint that ended up on me that was a little bit more planned um the, you know with the kids it was kind of like I have phone, like phone footage of that one take because I think with with a scene like that you only get one chance to cover right. them all in paint and they would get it put in their hands and like their little faces when they got it put in their hands and then went it back into the frame and put it on themselves. But they were so happy because the paint was cold yeah. <laughs> and they were so hot. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, it was such a special day. It was really like, I am I was so inspired by, by how hard everyone was working. Um, and yeah, it just makes me, it's very rewarding, I think, when you work for a long time on a song or a project or something and then you get a day like that where you're like oh look at what we can do with this thing now you know like look at the freedom that we have to amplify this and, and make this the strongest thing that we can so totally what was it like getting to put your dancing shoes on for that <laughs> oh my gosh like the most rewarding thing in the whole world I I have a small dance background I, I dabbled in it when I was a child for a long time and so it's something that just makes me feel really good I'm not a dancer mm. but I love to dance and yeah I mean as soon as I was in that room with Zoe who choreographed everything I was just the happiest person in the world and it was it's interesting I think watching the footage back of the rehearsals and, and seeing you know how I like need to loosen up I guess like when you haven't moved for a while in that sense and you're all kind of like self-conscious and constricted and then um yeah I think that was really interesting and I just loved watching the girls who are dancing with me in that video and just yeah getting videos sent of them rehearsing it for the first time and they're so amazing and yeah just trying to emulate their energy so I loved that and I loved loved working with all of those girls very very much. I think in a previous interview as well you also mentioned that each duology kind of has an aesthetic and kind of visual color palette maybe what do you think duology one kind of looks like? Mm, I mean the colour that I initially associated Geology 1 with was orange, which is why mm. I'm in like an orange pantsuit in the press shots, why the paint that I put across my chest in the video is orange. Like that was kind of the colour. I think it's because like the visuals for Geology 1 are very much like early morning um, flight out the window mm. and that beautiful sunrise and those like epic colours and I think with Bigger Than Me, it's like the stronger, bolder colours. And with Ready Made, oh. it's like the more soft uh, tones of a sunrise or sunset or something. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what we based everything around. But I think when it came to like the paint and the backdrop and everything, like it just became very colourful overall, which I love. Um, but yeah, definitely like bright, warmer tones is the Geology One colour palette. Can you just, can you kind of describe some upcoming? duologies like what do those kind of look like aesthetic wise oh I mean they they, they definitely all have a color palette for sure I think that like I I wouldn't say that I like um have any sense of like synesthesia in the way that someone like Maud does you know like Maud mm. constantly talks about and, and Billie Eilish they both talk a lot about how they write in colors but yeah. um there's definitely a certain feeling um that mm. the songs evoke and I think there's definitely there will definitely be duologies that feel visually more sad I guess like in terms of the color selections um there will be ones that feel softer there will be yeah I don't want to give too much away because you jump to conclusions with colors but <laughs> yeah I mean it's been really fun to play around with all of that stuff and, and to plan it and to you know 
also like there have been a few times where I've like called up a producer or a writer who was in on the session and been like just to confirm when we wrote this song like what colors did you see <laughs> um so yes everything's very intentional and um yeah I'm really looking forward to when we get to release the next duology and like dive into you know whatever the next kind of visuals will be for that I love that that's so exciting um I want to talk about Taylor Swift because you are drawn a lot of inspiration from her I watched your album review of Evermore I loved it amazing (laughs) I want to talk about like what sort of songwriting inspiration do you kind of draw from her maybe specifically from those previous albums as well Mm. um well I mean I just kind of feel like I'm one of so many like it was so interesting the other day actually with the fearless re-recorded version being released and like yeah. I mean that came out I don't know like I feel like I was listening to that when I was about nine like eight or nine um and I yeah when I heard those songs it was a very it was a very validating piece of work like for a lot of young I think a lot of young female songwriters like I think that because of how open she was and because of how great those songs were and she was also like really young when she wrote a lot of them and when she released that record initially like I think it just a lot of us were kind of like oh yeah I think I would like to do this too and it was so interesting like when it got released how many people posted about how that had been their story as well that Fearless was the album that made them be like I really just yeah I love songwriting. I want to do this. I want to be a performer. I want to be a writer. And yeah, so I mean, that kind of was, you know, my story with her being a massive influence. And then I've just like followed her career very closely ever since. Probably not in the same. I mean, it's very intense if you're like a very full on Swifty, like she puts all of these things together and hides little codes and Easter eggs. And like, sometimes I'm just like, oh, this is just so overwhelming. Like this poor poor fan base is exhausted. Um, But no, I think she's amazing. And it's very, I don't know. um, I think that when an artist does something with such strong intention, I think Mm. that that way of how organized she is with how she executes anything and everything I've loved watching how much that's influenced other artists as well and how you can see how an artist is like approaching their campaign or you know anything and you're just like oh the reason they're doing it with that much intention is because they love Taylor Swift (laughs) um I think yeah yeah so that's definitely how she inspired me and like with her songwriting as well like the last two records I really felt like I'd been wanting to hear her make those records for like my whole career to be honest like it really felt like an arrival or something like and I think she said something in an interview of like how whenever she's had to kind of reinvent herself for the next record it's felt like she's doing this like new thing and you know she's she's in this new place and it's different but like folklore and evermore felt like a return and I was Mm. like me too oh my god (laughs) it's so true yeah and I, I I think those records are amazing and Oh, yeah. I mean, I could talk about it forever. Um, But yes, and I think you can probably also say, I mean, it's it's hilarious to me, actually, how many people are picking up on it, because I don't know why. Yeah, it's funny that they did. It was just a surprise. But like in the Bigger Than Me video, they're like, wow, your movements are so obviously inspired by this person. I'm like, ah, yes, I guess they are. Um, But yeah, love, love forever. Well, talking about the Easter eggs in your duology post, you had a three post and you were talking about the little e- Easter eggs you hid in there and you were like, thank you, Miss Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, credit where it's due. Um, but yeah, it's really fun doing stuff like that, I think, because like there's so many pieces of, I mean, I'm obviously like a massive fan of like artists and songwriting and all of the details and records and like I just love that stuff so much which is why I started doing the album reviews because I just love to dive into that stuff so I think what's really fun about releasing new music is that I get to find ways with my audience to show them where I've put that kind of passion within like my own work and how Mm -hmm. I've released it and yeah I mean there's so many little bits of inspiration that make up the duologies whether it's other people's music or books that I've read or a film that I've watched or a place that I've been and I'm just really loving being able to give credit to all of those pillars of inspiration in the way that I'm releasing the work so it's amazing I want to rewind and kind of what was the initial reaction or what was your initial decision going into the music industry or what was your earliest memory of music 
Ooh, oh my gosh. Oh, I don't think I have a memory that doesn't have that music in it. Um, yeah, I grew up with um, um, mum, who's an avid music listener and took me to a lot of gigs and played a lot of really great singer songwriter records around the house from when I was very young. Um, and dad, who's a beautiful singer, but also has like an extended family of like very musical people, like my grandparents beautiful singers like everyone just loves music all of my cousins are you know played various instruments like we just kind of grew up in that world like it was just a part of our lives and sing grace around the table before we eat all together as a family and stuff like that so that's kind of how it's been in my life and I also my training is in in classical music because I was a chorister from when I was five um until I was 18 so that's kind of my early memories of music are just like being with my family um, and yeah, being in choir <laughs> and practicing. Um, yeah, and then I just, I'd listen to music all the time and I was always singing as a kid, probably more than I was talking, I was singing um, and watching The Wizard of Oz like a hundred times and just wanting to be Dorothy. And, yeah, <laughs> so they, that I think, yeah, it's really nice that they're my early memories of music and it's not like, oh, I'm gonna decide to do this thing now and I'm going to be in the industry. It's it's all just kind of been around me in my world. And I think the decision to, you know, do this was just very imminent. And just because yeah. I've always loved to write, I want to keep getting better as a writer. I love to perform. And yeah, I mean, it was just kind of like hook, line, sinker from the very beginning. So hopefully this, you know, goes well, because I don't really have a plan B. Um, <laughs> For our show, The Hangout, we always want to find out how music has sort of impact the artist. How do you think music has kind of changed your life? It's a deep philosophical question. Take your time. <laughs> oh, how do I think music has changed my life? Hmm. I think it's just a really good um, space for me to, um, like, reflect on just, like, how I'm moving through quite literally any scenario and like reflect on how like on my emotions and stuff like in the I kind of you know want to go down the very simple path of being like oh it's this very therapeutic thing I mean like that is the word but I think what's funny is like I've always said that since I was very young Mm -hmm. and writing songs and being like yeah music's so therapeutic for me like as a 12 year old and it's like you don't actually know what that word means you don't know (laughs) um and I don't think I realized how much I would need it until, mm. you know, I started having like, yeah, life experiences like heartbreak and yeah, things that were real obstacles or challenges. And then I would go into these writing sessions thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm at a writing session. How am I going to get through this? Because I'm, I'm so devastated or I feel exhausted and like, I, I how am I at work right now? But then realizing, you know, oh, actually this is the exact spot that I need to be because I just need to immediately put these feelings into music. And mm. it's been so amazing, like over the past couple of years, realizing how much I can just fall into that and how it's just a really safe space for me. And like, I, you know, I there was a moment in lockdown where I was kind of like, you know, struggling a bit and I just immediately called a friend of mine who I'd been working with over Zoom um, and I said I, I need to write right now like I just need to and I wrote a song in like three hours and we produced it all night and it you know it, I'm so lucky that I have that and I think I, I wonder <laughs> it's just I'm like oh I really wonder what people who don't write music like what their equivalent is to this obviously right. there is one but like it's such an incredible coping mechanism and it means that in art I get to encapsulate when I'm learning when I'm hurting when I'm healing and mark all of those moments in time which I'm just really 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 lucky that I get to do so that's yeah very long answer to that question but it was a big question so yes I love that answer that was amazing I think you're one of your collaborators Dylan Nash you guys have worked together for a while. Um, what would, I guess, like, when you're in, like, a writing room, how do you form that instant trust? Like, I guess when you first started working with him, how did you form that to, like, write these vulnerable songs that were so, like, authentic and everything? Oh, I mean, it's a pretty instant, like, given trust that you have to mm. have, which, in a way, when you think about it, you're kind of like, wow, I guess it's 
back and slightly abnormal what we do. But um, I think that it's very dependent on just, you know, being mindful of that. And, you know, the thing that's so amazing about so many writer producers that I've worked with over the past couple of years, like Dylan, is that they know how to hold that energy. They know how to make that space for an artist to feel and to express and to, you know, if it is a song that is being written for me and my project, um, for me to be the one leading that session, mm. I guess. So, I mean, I'm so fortunate. Like the first producer that I worked with um, when I was 15 was um, a guy called Josh Barber. And, you know, I just, he made so much space and, you know, made the studio just feel like a really safe environment for me yeah. to express myself, to learn to make mistakes when I was recording and I was very young and I didn't know anything and I think that like when you get in a room with anyone who's really experienced like you know you you want to step back you want to kind of shy away from it but I had all of these ideas and I think that it was just really amazing that Josh was able to observe and recognize that and just be like continue to kind of nudge me and encourage me to be the one at the forefront because I think that what was so great about that that being like my earliest studio experience was that it set up all of my other studio experiences that I would then mm. have with other collaborators and I would just assume like well yeah I, I do actually know what I want and how I want to create and what I'm doing and yeah, so that's that's just a really spectacular thing that I think writer producers do um, and with Dylan Oh man, like <laughs> there was a session um, and I can't wait for people to hear the song that we made together. Like I had had a really, really difficult weekend and I was working with Dylan and I, I went into a studio and, and I he was like, how are you? And I, I had a notebook <laughs> and I held it up to my face. And when I took it down from my face, it was just covered in water. Like I was so sad and I, <laughs> um, and then we just immediately turned it into music and like, but even while I was still so like fragile and everything, I still remember that session as like challenging in the sense that we kind of were trying to meet in the middle creatively. Like he mm. is one of my collaborators that pushes me and and makes sure he kind of goes, oh, do you reckon like maybe that this chorus that you've written is actually a verse idea? And, you know, so, and then, and then we got this song that just kind of, yeah, captured everything that I was going through over the course of that weekend. And yeah and people are going to get to hear it eventually which I'm really excited about so look I, I really <laughs> I don't have like an off button with when I talk about you're so that. passionate which I love that <laughs> I love it I love it that's like honestly the best the best artist to talk to because like you truly love what you do and it shows and it's just it's so like infectious it's so infectious oh I'm so glad Thank you very much. When when you're like writing or I guess creating music, evoking the emotions, what's the easiest way for you to project those? Are you doing it sonically first? Are you writing the lyrics first? Ooh, it's an interesting question. I think it depends on who I'm working with, to be honest. Mm. Like, um, I would say that, I mean, lyrics are definitely, you know, they're a very important part of my project because I love to tell stories. Um, but I work with a lot of producers that have this very evocative way of producing, like my really, really wonderful friend, Japanese Wallpaper, who I've known since we were teenagers. We released a song. Um, we were, I mean, he was the friend that I mentioned earlier that we were working a lot over Zoom together during lockdown. And we wrote um, this song called Better that um, we released. And I think that his name is Gab and he has this way of producing that just kind of creates this like incredible like sonic nest of like kind of vulnerability and like I don't know like, I can't I don't know how to describe it but basically his production just always meets me where I'm at emotionally mm. um and it I think that that way of producing encourages me to be more vulnerable with my lyrics um and so we end up creating music together that I think is really particularly open and I think that's just because his production is yeah very sensitive and just sonically yeah a very accurate it's just kind of like it feels like oh this is like my this song sounds like my heart and that sounds so oh so God. lame but <laughs> you know what I mean um, Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> he truly understands like you guys understand each other then it just works yeah yeah totally we're very fortunate to to have that collaborative relationship in that sense and yeah I don't know he just gets it he just totally gets it what can we expect from you for the rest of the year um 
you can expect more duologies um, and me blabbering on about <laughs> how I made the songs. Um, hopefully some shows in Australia. Um, unfortunately, obviously nothing overseas. Um, uh, I, but I, I'm so, uh, I'm really wanting to stay in touch with my audience overseas that, you know, I, I've gotten to do some tours in the UK and in America and, you know, I can't wait to hopefully eventually, you know, reconnect with those audiences down the track. Um, but yeah, I mean, just trying to find ways to, yeah, get this new music heard by as many people as possible and that everyone likes it. That is the plan. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about everything that's ahead. I'm, I'm loving this campaign so far. I'm so excited for your music and just for your career to take off. It's just so, so good. Um, I'll wrap the podcast up with what is the favorite song off of Folklore or Evermore, if you had to choose one. Oh, okay. Um, This is a very difficult question. I think with Evermore, the one that, like, struck me the most was Gold Rush. Like, Mm. I would just never shut up about how perfect that song is. (laughs) It blew, blew me away. Um, oh my gosh, with folklore. I mean, my girlfriends and I listen to August like all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I think when I think of um folklore, I think of August just because of how many nights we've spent like screaming the lyrics to that. <laughs> um, yeah, but they're all really, really special. Um, yeah, gosh, we're so like I mean, it's kind of like you think about it, it's such a conflicting thing to be like, if there was no pandemic, we wouldn't have folklore never. <laughs> Totally. Like, oh god. There's so much give and take during this last I guess <laughs> two years now. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. Oh, it's been such an interesting time. Um, but yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for chatting. It was such a pleasure. That was Greta Ray on, on that was Greta Ray on the hangout. <laughs>